Hi there, my name is Amy Luckowitz. I'm the director of the Drug Free Communities Grant over at the Police Department for the Town of North Reading. Hi everybody, my name is Laura Miranda. I'm the mental health and substance abuse clinician over at the Police Department with Amy. Thank you for joining us today. Amy and I are going to talk about programming and things that we're doing in town to keep everybody updated and in the loop. So Amy, can you first explain to us what is the Community Impact Team? Sure. So. Um, you know, both of us are involved in the Community Impact Team, and it started in 2012. So back then, Chief Murphy noticed that they, he was uh, dealing with a lot of uh, challenges that other department heads were challenged with as well, but they weren't really um, coordinating efforts. And so he started the Community Impact Team. And basically, it's made up, uh, the core is made up of department heads who have anything to do with quality of life issues. We also have plenty of volunteers involved. Uh, there's always a select board representative and the town administrator who participates as well. And through the Community Impact Team, there are subcommittees, but we call them action teams. So the K-12 Action Team, Social Services Action Team, the Youth Substance Use Prevention Coalition, which is a really long name, um, and the Mental Wellness Action Team. And Laura, you head up the Mental Wellness Action Team, so tell everybody a little bit about that group. Yeah, so the Mental Wellness Action Team is a group of community volunteers, town employees, and um, community members who meet with a focus on increasing mental health awareness and decreasing mental health stigma. We currently meet virtually via Zoom monthly. Um, we have had two successful virtual self-care weeks during the COVID-19 pandemic, and we are really looking forward to future initiatives. That's great. There's so much going on all the time. Um, and you know, as we work together as much as we possibly can, because mental health and substance abuse go together hand in hand, um, so for my role in the Community Impact Team with the Drug Coalition, it's mostly focused on youth. We're in our sixth year, if you can believe that went by so fast, and we work on preventing youth substance use um, in alcohol, tobacco, vaping, marijuana, and prescription drugs. Um, and we are focused mostly on upstream main, uh, excuse me, primary upstream prevention. What is upstream primary prevention? Sure, primary prevention aims at preventing a disease before it even starts. Um, in this case, it's substance abuse. It's related to preventing exposure to hazard or a behavior that can cause a disease or an injury. It's the best way to re reduce uh, population disease because you stop it from even starting. And there's a lot of research and science behind that kind of model. I personally love hearing that so much that the coalition is doing is based in science. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that looks like? Sure. Um, because we're federally funded through the CDC, everything we do is based on science. Um, we use science-based models like the Strategic Prevention Framework, or SPF. Uh, not, nothing to do the with sunblock. the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, that's a continuing improve, improvement model, which is great. And our activities are all rooted in the seven strategies for community change, which outlines activities like providing information changing or modifying policies, or even enhancing skills on how to prevent kids from using drugs. Um, sometimes the activity isn't even aimed at students, it's focused on adults in, in their lives. A good example of this is um, offering the adult workshops in Strong Families Res Resilient Kids 40 Developmental Assets. Uh, Laura, you'll also be participating in that program, so why don't you explain that one? Sure. So this program is rooted in decades of research by the Search, Search Institute. It's broken down by developmental stages, and it identifies 40 um, imperative assets for kids to have to set them up for success and try to prevent them from engaging in high-risk behavior. So an example of one of the 40 assets would be a trusted adult outside of the home. Does a child have that? So the more assets that a kid has, the better prepared they are to resist those high-risk behaviors. Um, and the coalition, I know, is also offering another program, GGC, or Guiding Good Choices. You're familiar with the program and quite heavily involved, so tell us more about that. Sure, Guiding Good Choices is another science-based uh, curriculum, and this time um, we are going to be working, this is for parents only, and again, we have some phenomenal facilitators, Jen, uh, Jen Ford, who is the Director of Youth Services, and Jason Slattery from Youth Services Committee are going to be co hosting that, and they've got a lot of experience in uh, doing that. This time in the spring of 2022, we're going to be offering it as a series of workshops that parents can um, sign up for individually, but we recommend all four workshops to maximize the learning. The cool thing about this is it's really for caregivers, so we really want to encourage grandparents who are raising grandkids, um, community members, parents, and educators to all participate. 
and it covers things like how to talk to your kids about difficult situations, how to de-escalate in the home, any sort of tense uh, strategy. You and I will be speakers there and mm -hmm. talk to the ki uh, parents about mental health and substance abuse trends. Awesome, what a great program. Are there any other opportunities for adult education in the coalition's efforts? Yes, so we're bringing back In Plain Sight, which we haven't done since 2019, great. I think. In Plain Sight is a program where we set up a mock bedroom and we walk adults through it and point out possible red signs of substance abuse. Um, so sometimes these red flags are hidden in plain sight and somebody just might not be aware of what that, that um, device is or what that red flag is. So we're gonna walk uh, people through that. We're also offering a, a public naloxone training and you're gonna be participating in that. Can you, can you tell everybody what, what naloxone is? Sure, so naloxone is an opioid reversal drug. It's commonly known or sometimes known as Narcan. So this training is going to teach community members how to properly use it, give them education on the Good Samaritan laws, and how to help somebody with a substance use disorder. So we will even get into where in town you can get uh, naloxone and keep it on hand just in case. And I love explaining this to people like an EpiPen. So it's not anything that everybody has to carry around, but if somebody needs one and they're carrying it and they need it, you'll know how to administer it safely. I think it's so important um, to help first responders have that first dose in mm -hmm. the victim where they can respond uh, all that quicker. So that's gonna be available to the community and we're excited to do that. And uh, I think, believe we're offering four sessions of that. Great, I'm so excited for these programs. How can people in the community, now that they know about them, where do they go to register? Sure, so they do it two ways. They can contact us, <laughs> um, the easiest email, we'll put it up on the screen, coalition at northreadingma.gov or visit uh, northreadingma.gov slash CIT. And for all of these events, they're listed under events. Perfect, I had men uh, wanted to mention earlier too, also, another program that we're offering is the virtual uh, mindfulness workshops oh, yes. that will be going throughout the remainder of the year, but our next one is April 7th at 6.30, so you can also register um, at that link for that too. So can you tell us a little bit too about why mindfulness is so important right now? So I wanted to offer to the community because it's very light lifting for community members to sit in front of their screen. It will be virtual um, and just listen to a guided meditation. You know, it doesn't take much effort or learning to just listen or try to listen and especially with everything that everybody has going on right now if they can carve out this half hour time to just tune out and relax even the mind and the body that would be wonderful if both could happen during the session uh, it's important you know we need that when everybody is so go 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 and upstairs and the body is just always moving right now so I'm looking forward to offering this to the yeah. community I'm thrilled that you're going to be doing that Thanks. yeah yeah of course yeah. So turning away from the adult population, you had mentioned that providing education is one of the coalition's strategies. How does the coalition educate students in North Reading? Yep, yeah, so that mostly happens in where students go, the schools. Um, so we have a great partnership with the public schools and the school resource officer, Detective Lucci. So um, we focus on myth busting. We don't like to go into a classroom and tell the kids to just say no, that old dare model. We like to preach prevention um, in forms of delay. So if you're gonna decide to use, put it off as long as possible, we teach them why. But we also like to myth bust. So something like that might be our vape curriculum where we go in and a lot of kids, a lot of adults, by the way, still think vaping is based with water, mm -hmm. water vapor. And therefore it is healthy, quote unquote healthy. And so we like to teach them that it's not water. It is um, a chemical aerosol mm -hmm. and what that does to their lungs uh, we also, of course, talk to them about nicotine and nicotine addiction. I think for my favorite part of our classes, and we do things on marijuana, alcohol, prescription drugs, um, and as I mentioned, vaping, I think my favorite part is to teach the kids about explicit instruction on refusal skills. Mm. You know, I think a lot of parents feel that their kids are confident enough to just say no, but we know that that's just not true. The kids tell us that that's not true and they don't know how to do that. So Detective Lucci and I talked to them about several different strategies on how to resist uh, peer pressure, which I love. Mm -hmm. I'm thrilled to let everybody know if they didn't read about it in the paper that um, this is the first year we taught all fifth graders about catch my breath wow. vaping. Every fifth grader in the entire town got the same curriculum through all three um, elementary schools. And this is so important, going back to the upstream prevention, it's to get it in at the youngest age. Mm -hmm. So by the time they are presented with the opportunity to vape from maybe from an older peer, maybe from a family member, that they'll have a, a higher level of education 
and that practice and refusal skills. Absolutely. So thrilled that we could partner with the schools and thank the schools for helping us get in on in the fifth grade. And you and I have talked about how those refusal skills can apply to other things in life too, you know, not just substances, just Absolutely. building strong kids and setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. So the community impact team is always looking for volunteers, right? And yep. so to share how somebody can sign up to volunteer, we will put our contact information up on the screen, but people can also get information at northreading.gov slash CIT and click on volunteers. Remember, that's also where you can register for events by clicking on the events tab. Laura, I'm glad that we were able to work together and I, I hope that we're doing a good job in helping people understand that mental health and substance abuse go hand in hand. We have a really cool model in North Reading that you, myself, and um, the school resource officer are all able to work together. So in North Reading, we have prevention, treatment and intervention, and enforcement all in the same house, and that really facilitates um, a lot of communication and collaboration, and I think we're really lucky to have that opportunity. So thanks for talking to me today. Thank you too, Amy. Thanks. Until next time.